Hello everyone and thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the Happy Model Larva X HD. Featuring 1203 6200 kV motors on 65mm props. The camera for your FPV view as well as HD recording is the Caddx Baby Turtle. Flight controller is a Crazy B F4 Pro, which features a 12 amp 4 in 1 ESC. VTX is power switchable from 25 milliwatts to 200 milliwatts. Attached is a micro antenna. I have the FR Sky version, so my receiver is right down in here. The control cable, so you can change settings on your baby turtle, is right under here. I put some book binding tape over it to keep it in place. Mine weighs just about 63 grams. It comes with three 450 milliamp 3S batteries, which brings the all up weight to 103 and a half grams. Motor post for motor post, I'm getting about 122 millimeters. Bottom plate appears to be three millimeters thick. Skinniest part of the arm looks to be four and a half millimeters wide. The carbon's pretty flexible. A lot of the bottom plate's been cut out. And there's some weird mounting holes out here on the arms for something. It also comes with the Caddx control board. Comes with a set of these prop protectors and a 3D printed canopy if you want to use those prop protectors. We also get a bag of screws, probably for mounting the prop protectors. We also get an extra set of props, some heat shrink, some random screws and washers, a little screwdriver, here on the back side, as well as a prop remover and a little bit of foam. I ended up with two extra zip ties after using two to mount my receiver. Also, a case that you can put everything in. It also comes with a single page instruction guide. We got a nice calm day that we're gonna go for a fly. This is actually some older flight footage shortly after I got back from vacation. Many of you know that I've struggled for weather uh, to fly outside. That's why we've been seeing a lot of videos about inside flying on this channel. It's either been cold or we've gotten three snowstorms. They've been very minor snowstorms that, that have come through. Uh, they seem to come through. The snow hangs around for four or five days. We get a melt off and then we get another little tiny snow and it melts off. So anyways, when I've been flying outside, I've really only been getting in about three packs over my lunchtime because after each pack, I have to come inside and warm my hands back up. I did take a propane heater out just to have something near me that I could stick my hands over and try to expedite my time between packs. And that wasn't very successful. But at any rate, this machine is a little bit surprising in the fact that I'm used to Happy Model products having that sort of light and agile feel. I think looking back on it, I shouldn't have been surprised, but when it comes to these micros that have an HD camera on it, it's pretty rare that they're high performers. I think one of the better ones that we've seen with an HD camera was the Skip HD, and that was a three inch prop machine. That flew pretty well and had really good stable footage. From my eyes, I'm seeing stable footage here, but I'm also seeing a lack of power. I'm also seeing or feeling a lack of response. Uh, some of the response could come from the fact that we have pretty flexible frame, pretty flexible props, relatively low torque motors. But that means we get three minutes of flight time flying like this. And you'll notice when I try to fling it over the house uh, that when I do it, sometimes I end up a little bit short or at least short from what I typically do. Um, or I have to stay on the throttle a lot longer or it's a much more muted punch over the house. And, and that all comes down to the performance factor. And, you know, we're carrying extra weight. We have lower torque motor, so it isn't able to just continue to spin up those props. And the props, while they don't seem to sound like they're deforming and they don't seem to create any oscillations at the top end of the throttle, I suspect they don't generate much thrust at the top end of the throttle. So once you get to about 70%, maybe a little bit more than that, you seem to have topped out with these props. Now, I would like to test it with a few other props, but that's just a time issue. As I said, I've struggled to get outside flight time and I'm working on about six different quads working on. I've got about six others to be flying as well, so I need to mix them in. I think the benefit would be to try some bi blades, some 65 millimeter bi blades, and see how they fly. I don't expect the three inch props to fly very well on this, because I just don't think those motors will handle it all that well. I think a, a 1204 at least would be needed for a three inch uh, bi blade, like a 3016. That wraps up the flight. That was three minutes. Here is a little view of what we see in the goggles. I always try to remember to show this because not everybody's familiar with how these own one HDV, these HD FPV cameras work. So your view in the goggles is much lower resolution than what you see on the recording. That recording that I showed you on the first flight is all on the SD card. So you have to take that SD card out, load it on a computer or something in order to be able to view it back. So I, I think I should cover these a little bit. While they feel stiff on these contact points, the materials themselves I just don't think are going to be all that robust. I've got another machine over here 
Granted, it's a bigger machine. It's the HGLRC Sector 132. These prop guards are actually going to provide some protection. You can see they're thicker. They're rolled at the edge. They also weigh a lot more. So there's you know two sides to that. But if you were to be interested in this quad and you saw the performance and you still like it and you want to fly something with HD and you want to try this product out, I wouldn't expect these to last very long and you're going to have to disassemble your canopy um, and that's going to be a little bit of a problem or a little, I shouldn't call it a problem. It's going to take you some time because we're going to need to pull out. Well, we have to be careful not to let these screws come out. You can see they've got a screw right here. So that should stop it from coming all the way out because we do need to mount our camera or our canopy on top, the 3D printed canopy that I showed you in the quick roll. That's going to have to go on top. You also have to include your uh, camera inside that canopy and then reroute your antenna. So if you're wanting to use the prop guards, you've got a little bit of work to do before you can jump into that. I did fly it on the default tune. I'll flash that on the screen so you can see those PIDs. Uh, I didn't tweak those out at all. Um, I did break, um, I just broke my antenna for my zip tie in a tumble. And I should show you some of those crashes because I had a, a quite a few crashes and one of my concerns with this is the, the, the flexibility then the thinness of the arms. And, and quite honestly, I, this frame kind of feels like it was meant for something else. And they kind of retrofitted it by chance. I mean, because look at these holes out here on the arms. What's that for? What what would you be mounting clear out there? I don't understand that. And of course, we've got a lot of the base plate that's been carved out, probably for partially because we have these motors that need to be connected. And then we have also the USB port right down here, if you can't see that. Now, I did not use a pad or anything, the included pad, to mount my battery. I put it directly on the carbon and I cinched it down. It seemed to work just fine. My batteries, because I don't have a lot of the uh, wide batteries, most of the newer batteries in the last 18 months or so are these same sort of stick style of batteries where they're thin and long they ride right in here pretty nice the only screw that's going to bump into it is going to be this back one here otherwise you've got a nice void to put your battery here but again as i mentioned pretty flexible frame especially out here on the arms uh, so that's going to be important to keep it light to maintain it and hopefully you've seen a few of those crashes that i flew in the um that I, I had in the top left hand corner of the screen also note the canopy is mounted down with nylon nuts here i'm not a fan of that i think that needs to be metal and if i look at it th these are hex headed screws i uh, can you see that so we've got a metal screw and a nylon nut which probably means it won't vibrate loose but it also that nut isn't going to hold things very well so if you were to come down and hit something on the canopy this way i would not be surprised if these nuts got stripped out and the canopy started to pull off and maybe even got damaged you can see this post at the back is it is metal let me clang that a little bit here that's metal we do have another hex headed screw there as well as down here i'm not a fan of these screws they've used to this uh for the flight stack they are, oh, I can't remember this. They're, they're not flush or button heads. They're kind of recessed, um, but the carbon isn't recessed. And also note the th distance between, can I show that very well? See that right in there? There is very little distance between the screw and the edge of the carbon. Of course, our stack shouldn't be taking any direct impact, but if you were to have a crash, where you were to tumble through a tree or maybe hit a curb and it hit up here, it's a possibility that if the screws are strong enough that you could crack that frame right along that thin area. I think that's possibly a weak point if we do have a collision this way, which normally our motors and our arms are out here. They'll take the brunt of that, but you know, those crashes can happen as well. I think the flight that I showed you probably wasn't what this was designed for. I think it's designed more around cruising and with these combination you can get a pretty long flight time even try to fly it with as aggressively as i could with the camera angle all the way up i still got a three minute flight on a little 450 milliamp 3s battery so that's pretty good but i do think that I, ha I have some gross concerns so if you are looking at this product seriously you need to make sure you're doing your homework before you spend your money there are a few deficiencies as far as i can tell 
there seems to be good value they do ship with three batteries hopefully that doesn't cause a problem with customs for you in your country because i know battery shipping lipos in general has become something that's been has become a sticking point for many countries another item we see from time to time is sometimes caddx cameras will have some dirt or debris underneath the lens or maybe it's on the sensor and that can move around from crash to crash or you can take the lens off and blow it out i've had after i've cleaned them i've had more debris get back in there it seems to be the cameras aren't sealed up very well but i've had a couple of these and i don't recall having that issue with their hd fpv cameras leave your experiences down below and the caddx turtle or the caddx cameras but try to be specific are you talking about the the baby turtles or are you talking about the the caddx turtle or some other caddx camera that way people who are reading the comment section will know which camera because maybe there's one camera that they do a better job of keeping the the environment clean so you don't get debris or dust inside i'll have links down in the video description if you'd like to take a look i thought it was on sale but i think i've already passed the sale period on banggood uh, but that link will be down there you can uh, check that out if you want to go compare the prices or any specs or additional information that i may have missed out on if you do have any comments questions suggestions or otherwise please let me know in the section down below i appreciate your time and thank you for watching